Wouldn't it be nice just to have peace, like peace? Can you feel it? Like no worries, no stress, no struggles. All is just at rest and yet feel so unrealistic, especially at this present time where there's so many things that stir up worry and anxiety and stress. It's the midst of a pandemic and some people feel like we should put air quotes around pandemic and that it's not really a pandemic and other people feel like no it's the most serious thing in the world and we should all wear masks or other people feel like no don't wear masks if you do you're a sheep and your kids are supposed to be going back to school but who knows if it's going to be online or if it's going to be in person and if it starts in person is it going to stay in person or are we going to go back to online and how is that going to work out with your job and some of you may have lost your job over all of this and now you've been laid off and how are you going to make ends meet. Uh, add to that all the social rest going on around the country and protest about, about social injustice and race and add to the protests, the riots and, and uh, all the unrest that that creates and all the worry about the future and it's a contentious political season and where is that going to go? And some are very pro-Trump and some are very pro-Biden and some are sure that whichever one we elect is going to completely ruin the United States of America. There's plenty of things to be worried about, plenty of things to cause us stress right now, isn't there? And in the midst of all of that, the question for us as disciples of Jesus really is, how can we have peace? Hey, welcome to The Bible in Life, where our goal is to give you the most clear and spiritually helpful Bible teaching we can so that you can grow as a disciple of Jesus. If we're meeting for the very first time, my name is John Whitaker, and I'm glad you're joining me on this video. And as I said in the introduction, there's just plenty of things right now that can stir up anxiety, stir up concern, stir up worry about our immediate future, the next few weeks or months as our kids go back to school or a job, about the long-term future of our country, like where is it all going and how's it all gonna play out? And yet, as disciples of Jesus, we are regularly told by Jesus and by Jesus' apostles to not worry, to not be anxious. In fact, somebody once described worry as practical atheism. Man, like, ouch, that really stings, doesn't it? And that shouldn't be a cause of guilt for us, right? Like, that's not to pile guilt on us as disciples of Jesus. That's more to make us aware of the fact that as disciples of Jesus, we're supposed to trust God rather than worry about the future. And yet it's not always easy to do that. And worry and anxiety just steals our joy and it steals our peace. Well, in this video, I want to give you specifically three actions that the Apostle Paul teaches us in Philippians chapter 4, three actions that cultivate peace. Philippians chapter 4 says this, and remember when Paul writes these words, it's not like everything is going smooth for him. He's sitting on a beach somewhere, right, enjoying a mojito or something like that. No, the Apostle Paul, when he writes these words, he's actually under arrest, uh, chained to a Roman guard, and he's not 100% sure what the future is going to look like. And yet he says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say it, rejoice. Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. That's the first action for us that will cultivate peace is rejoicing in the Lord. Now that doesn't just mean be happy, right? Like whip up the feelings of happiness and feel happy uh, about Jesus or something like that. When it says rejoice in the Lord, what Paul is essentially saying is, in what do you find your joy? There's a lot of things we can find our joy in. We can find it in our family. We can find it in our career. We can find it in simple pleasures of life, right? And most of those things aren't bad. Um, but those things are temporary. Those things shift. Those things change so easily. So where do you find your joy? And what Paul is saying is, Rejoice in the Lord means you celebrate Jesus. You rejoice in what he has done for you. You rejoice in the fact that he's king of kings and lord of lords. You rejoice in the fact that he is sovereign over all and his kingdom ultimately will come and his will will be done. You rejoice in the fact that he's forgiven your sin, he's poured out his spirit, he's made you his own, that you're part of his kingdom. You rejoice in Jesus and that's the ultimate center of and the ultimate source of your joy. So you place your joy in Jesus and you're going to rejoice in him and what he's done and who he is. Rejoice in the Lord always, not just when you feel like it, not just when it's easy. It's just like, no, my joy is in Jesus. That's 
as a disciple. That's who I trust. That's who I love. That's where I find uh, my satisfaction and my deepest pleasures in Jesus himself. So rejoice in the Lord always. And Paul says, I want to restate it again. I'll say rejoice. Action number one, rejoice in the Lord. Action number two, in verse five of Philippians four, he says, let your forbearing spirit be known to all men. Some translations, let your gentle spirit be known to all men. That's action number two is to be gentle towards, to be forbearing towards other people. Like we live in a world and where people have strong opinions, strong feelings, and they don't always agree, or people do wrong towards us, or people can just be annoying and irritating. And what Paul is saying is, you be forbearing. You be the kind of person who's just, you're gentle and consider others. You, you see things from their perspective. You try to maybe stand in their shoes and understand where they're coming from, or at least you put up with them gently and kindly and graciously. So you're gentle towards other people. You let your forbearing spirit be known, not just to the easy people, the good people, the nice people, to all people, he says. And then he actually kind of doesn't, it's not real clear the connection, but he almost insinuates a reason. He says, for the Lord is near. The Lord is near. Like Jesus sees what's going on in your life. Jesus sees what's going on in the world. Jesus ultimately is going to return and set all things straight. Jesus is the one that will, will right all wrongs and will fix all the problems in the world. We don't have to do that. We don't have to straighten out everybody else. We don't have to fix everybody else. We don't have to make sure they know how wrong they are and how right we are. We're just gentle forbearing, patient, gracious, and kind with them. And so that's action number two. If we want to have peace, we rejoice in the Lord, and we're patient and forbearing and gentle towards people that could be annoying, irritating, bothersome, or that we don't agree with. And then action number three, verse six says, uh, be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Right in the heart of all of this stuff, be anxious for nothing. Um, but let your requests be made known to God. That's action number three. Let your requests be made known to God. This isn't worry in God's direction. This is actually asking God to do things that we need done, to provide for our needs, to give us wisdom on how to deal with our kids' schooling situation, to uh, be with our national leaders and help them to make good, wise choices that are really in the best interest of the people, to help us be patient with the situation at hand, right? Like we, whatever our needs are, we lay those out before God and we trust him. Like be anxious for nothing, he says, but in everything, all circumstances, all situations, in everything, by prayer and supplication, two very different words for really just communicating to God. One, just general praying and in general, supplication means requesting, asking, and it's appropriate to ask God for things. So by prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known to God. Just set them out there. God, here's what I need. I trust you know what's best. I trust that you're wise. I trust you know the best way to meet my needs. And I trust that you have my best interest at heart. And I know you're going to do good for me. And so here's my needs, but I'll trust, with you. I'll trust you with how you want to sort that out. Let your request be made known to God. And he says, and do so with thanksgiving. Make sure as we're asking God for things, we're thanking him for all the good things he's brought into our life. We're thanking him for his answers to previous prayers. We're thanking him for the spiritual blessings he's poured out on us. So we're, we're asking for things with thanksgiving. So those are our three actions. Rejoice in the Lord. Be forbearing to people. Ask God for our needs to be met and do so with thanksgiving. And then he says in verse 7, And the peace of God, God's very own peace, the peace that only God can provide, the peace of God which surpasses, which goes beyond all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Do you catch that? Like, the peace of God is going to guard. It's going to set up camp around your heart and your mind, and it'll give you peace. It'll guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So in the midst of this crazy season we're in, where there's plenty of things to stir up trouble and anxiety and worry, we can have peace. And we can have peace by rejoicing in the Lord, by being patient with people, and by asking God to meet our needs. And we do so with thanksgiving. And if we do all that, God's peace will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus.